Today on Newswatch, Clinton and Trump win big in the latest primaries. See what that means for the other Democratic and Republican presidential hopefuls. Plus, how a former star quarterback, congressman, and pastor survived the toughest test of his life. And somebody's symptoms can go away, their joint pain can go away, their muscle aches and pains can go away. I see that day in and day out. How can you reverse the effects of an autoimmune disease? And thank you so much for joining us for CBN Newswatch. I'm Ephraim Graham. The front runners in the race for president are both one step closer to clinching their party's nominations. Donald Trump completed a five state sweep in Tuesday's Republican presidential primaries, and Hillary Clinton won four out of the five states, losing only Rhode Island to her rival, Bernie Sanders. Caitlin Burke is on this story. Both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are beginning to shift their focus to the general election, no, you know, the both phony. expecting to go up against the other. Frankly, if Hillary Clinton were a man, I don't think she'd get 5% of the vote. The only thing she's got going is the woman's card. Love trumps hate. Clinton now has nearly 90% of the delegates needed to secure the Democratic nomination. And after a sweep of Tuesday's primaries, Trump is one step closer to avoiding a contested convention. Ted Cruz and John Kasich are hoping their alliance to stay out of each other's way in Indiana, Oregon, and New Mexico will help slow down Trump's momentum and block him from winning the nomination before the convention. I got good news for you. Tonight, this campaign moves back to more favorable terrain. The current GOP delegate count sits at Trump with 950 delegates, Cruz with 560, and Kasich with only 153. It takes 1,237 to win the nomination. On the Democratic side, Bernie Sanders refuses to go quietly into the night. The fight that we are waging is not an easy fight. But I know you are prepared to wage that fight. The candidates now move on to Indiana. Sanders, Cruz, and Trump all holding events there today. With Kasich pulling back in the Hoosier state, Cruz will basically have a shot at a one-on-one -on -one race against Trump. But if he loses, it could turn out to be his last stand. Caitlin Burke, CBN News. A fraud case against Donald Trump is heading to court. The billionaire is accused of ripping off students for millions of dollars with his Trump University. A judge has ruled the case is heading to trial, which means Trump could be forced to testify in court this fall. If Trump wins the Republican nomination, it could set up an unusual site of a presidential nominee taking the stand to testify right before the election. The case is being brought by New York's attorney general, who calls it a bait and switch scheme. He says Trump could face millions in fines in this civil lawsuit. Get ready for Obamacare insurance premiums to rise sharply. Most insurance companies have been losing money in Obamacare marketplaces, and now The Hill reports insurers are already making the case for premiums to rise. They say fewer people are signing up and that they are sicker and will have higher medical costs than, been, than had been expected. The price increases could become an issue for Republicans in this election year. Severe weather struck across the Midwest overnight, unleashing a tornado in northern Texas, along with hail, high winds, and multiple injuries. Extremely loud. Extremely loud. Very quick. Very fast moving, but very, very loud. I was on Wellman Road coming in to uh, Lawrence, just north of town here, and like was just hitting lots of standing water, hydroplating pretty much all over the place, going about 30 miles an hour in a 55 mile per hour zone. In Howe, Texas, the police chief says, chief says four people were injured after the vehicles they were in were caught up in the tornado. The National Weather Service Storm Prediction Center warns people from the Gulf Coast to the Midwest, North Carolina and Virginia should be on alert for nasty weather today. The U.S. has announced a terror threat to its citizens traveling abroad in Turkey. The U.S. Embassy says Washington has received warnings that terror groups plan to strike popular tourist destinations in Turkey. The warnings come after Turkey has suffered six deadly suicide bombings since July. The U.S. Embassy advises citizens to be vigilant in crowded public and tourist areas. 
ISIS is losing cash and recruits fast. U.S. officials say up to $800 million in cash has been destroyed in U.S.-led airstrikes. In one case, an estimated $150 million was destroyed at a house in Mosul. The blow to the group's finances also comes as they have lost territory, outfields and recruits. The terrorist group has seen a 90 percent drop in new recruits and it is reported people are fleeing the organization. Some defectors had been captured posing as women or as refugees in Iraq. An ongoing spike in Christi Christian persecution is largely concentrated in the Middle East. Evangelist Franklin Graham is sponsoring a persecution summit later this year. Recently, CBN News' Chris Mitchell spoke in Jerusalem with a leader from Graham's ministry about the rise in persecution. How serious is the situation for Christians here in the Middle East? Oh, I think it's very serious. I mean, we do a lot of work in, uh, uh, whether it's in Jordan, whether it's in Syria, whether it's in Turkey, we work in many different Middle Eastern countries, Iraq. Uh, th that space is shrinking all the time for them. Uh, you know, ISIS is sending a, a very clear and chilling signal when they line up 21 Ethiopians and cut their heads off. It means something. Uh, but when they kidnap Christian women uh, coming out of Assyria and put them into sexual slavery, when they execute the men uh, in front of the family members, it, it means something. And it, it, you know, there has been a mass exodus of Christians out of the Middle East. And this is where Christianity started. What I can say in the nearly 30 years that I've been working around the world is that over the last 10 years, five years, two years, I see this increasing speed of the fulfillment of prophecy. It's, it's like a big river coming into a narrow channel and starting to pick up a lot of speed and intensity. So I can't see forward, but I can see where we are and I can read the book and I, wow, that's this and that's this and that's this. And you know, whether it's an Ezekiel or Revelation or whatever, you see all of these things coming together. And uh, uh, this is gonna be a front row seat to what that's happens right. right here. That's exactly right. You can see this full interview on Chris's Jerusalem Dateline program. Find it at CBNNews.com. In Israel, a new poll shows the majority of young people living in the Gaza Strip support knife attacks against Israelis. The survey from the Jerusalem Media and Communication Center shows nearly 79 percent support the attacks, and 48 percent of them want the knife attacks to continue. They have been more, there have been more than 120 attacks and attempted assaults by Palestinians using kitchen knives. At least 20 Israelis have been killed and more than 80 Palestinians shot dead by security forces. Still to come here on Newswatch, millions of Americans suffer from an autoimmune disease. So far, there's no cure, but doctors may have found the next best thing. Fifty million Americans suffer from an autoimmune disease. That is more than the number of people with cancer and heart disease combined. New research suggests processed foods could play a role. As Lori Johnson shows us, an increasing number of doctors say cleaning up the diet could reverse the autoimmune trend. Our immune system keeps us healthy by attacking invaders like viruses. One problem, however, is our immune system can misfire and attack healthy tissue. That can lead to one of more than a hundred disorders like lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's disease, and multiple sclerosis. Many people don't even realize they have an autoimmune disease, assuming instead that their difficulty concentrating, abdominal pain, or fatigue are just a part of regular life. Other symptoms include feeling cold much of the time or having a rapid heartbeat. When doctors diagnosed Sierra Valinga with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, they told her the same thing millions of others with autoimmune issues hear. It was just always, oh, take this pill and and you'll, for the rest of your life, and that's, that's all we can do for you. You're un incurable and you have a disease. Sierra didn't believe the medication helped. I was having physical symptoms, like my hair was falling out. Um, I was very puffy-faced and joint pain. I had tons of sinus issues, which they just either said it was allergies or a sinus infection. So they'd put me on antibiotics and send me on my way. Then she heard about Dr. Amy Myers, one of a growing number of autoimmune specialists who believe drugs often make matters worse.
Many of them have the side effects of decreased immune system and getting infections, even leading to lymphomas and cancers. Dr. Myers prescribes a clean diet to prevent and possibly reverse autoimmune disorders. That means that somebody's symptoms can go away, their joint pain can go away, their muscle aches and pains can go away, their, um, they can get off these very harsh medications. And I see that day in and day out. Sierra followed this route and after six months regained her health. So far it's it's worked great. I've never felt better since I can remember. I didn't realize that I could get my brain back working where it's firing. My hair has, is the longest it's ever been. I can't even get a manicure because my my nails grow so quickly that my fingernail polish is grown out in about a week. Dr. Myers believes autoimmune diseases stem from a condition called leaky gut. Nearly 80% of our immune system is in our gut. And if we have an autoimmune disease, it's a problem with our immune system. A leaky gut means large openings form along the intestinal walls, allowing big particles to escape that shouldn't. The immune system recognizes the particles as foreign and attacks them, as well as healthy tissue they resemble. Myers says a leaky gut comes from eating too much processed food, sugar, dairy, and gluten, which is in wheat. So gluten, everybody's thinking, oh, this is just a fad, this is such hype. How in the world can gluten be bad? It's the bread of life, we've been eating it forever. Well, the bread that we're eating now is not the bread that we've been eating forever. That's because scientists have hybridized wheat over the years. Today's crop produces a higher yield, but contains more gluten. Our once wholesome cheese isn't the same either. We have overprocessed our dairy. We're using different cows than our great-great-grandparents did. We're using a lot of gro growth hormone, antibiotics. Too much sugar causes inflammation. I mean, everything really boils down to inflammation. I mean, even these days with the cardiologist, a heart attack they now know is an inflammatory process. Dementia and Alzheimer's, inflammatory process. And of course, we have autoimmune diseases, which are an inflammatory process. What's really creating that inflammation? A lot of research is going towards carbs these days and simple sugars. Dr. Myers recommends avoiding gluten, dairy, sugar, and processed foods to heal the gut and reverse autoimmune disease. Correcting the problem usually involves cooking at home from scratch. In an ideal world, we would all be eating, I believe, like our ancestors. So eating uh, pasture-raised meats, grass-fed meats, fish, vegetables, fruit, more of a paleo diet. I have been making lots of wraps, using lettuce as, as a wrap. Dr. Myers provides many healthy recipes in her book, such as coconut cream berry parfait, Brussels sprouts with dark cherries, and crispy coconut shrimp. I don't want gluten. I don't crave milkshakes like I used to. So one way to guard against or treat any number of autoimmune diseases is to consider an anti-inflammatory diet like the paleo plan, rich in vegetables and healthy fats, minus the processed foods, sugar, dairy, and wheat. It could be well worth the effort. Lori Johnson, CBN News. Next, he is a former star quarterback, congressman, and pastor. J.C. Watts tells us how he survived the toughest test of his life by learning to dig deep. We're sitting down with J.C. after this. Life is hard. We all face diversity at one time or another. In a moment, we'll hear from a former political star who has known tough times firsthand, and he says the way to handle them is to dig deep. Take a look. As a star quarterback, congressman, pastor, and now business leader, J.C. Watts has learned what it takes to overcome, persevere, and succeed. In an inspiring and practical new book called Dig Deep, Seven Truths to Finding the Strength Within, Watts shares the secrets to digging deep by going beyond the excuses and blame game and finding your inner reservoirs of inspiration, character, strength, and motivation. Mark Martin spoke with J.C. Watts about his new book, The Deep, and his thoughts on this year's political climate. 
J.C. Watts is a former Republican congressman from Oklahoma, and he joins us now to talk about politics and government. Welcome, Mr. Watts. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I appreciate your time today. The GOP race for the nomination has exposed some deep divides. Is the Republican Party broken, would you say? Mark, I, I think they're, they're awfully close, and mm -hmm. I don't think it just started in the last six or seven months, or did, I don't think it started in the last six or seven years. I think there's an angst out there, or has been, that I could probably take you back to the 92 elections with Ross Perot when we saw somewhat of uh, an angst uh, growing uh, in, in the electorate. Um, you know, fast forward from 92 to about 2000 and uh, or 2004 with, with Howard Dean on the left. It was more a left-leaning rebellion, if you will. And, and then fast forward today, I think it's been probably 20, 30 years coming, but I, I, think it, and I think the divide, the angst that we see is more on the Republican side than the Democrat side. But it, it, it may not be broken, but boy, it, it's, it's bent. Uh, qu quite a lot, and, and I don't think what we're seeing as the answer is the answer. Well, how can they pull it together before the election? Well, you know, if I think it's always challenging if, you know, uh, if, if Mark, if you're saying, I'm going to try to be JC, or JC says, I'm going to try to be Mark, you are who you are. I am who I am in politics as a Republican and, and, a, and a Democrat party. And I think it's healthy for us to have a strong two-party system. But when Republicans doesn't look any differently than the Democrats, then I think you have challenges. I think people want choices. They, 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 they want to say, okay, Mark, you're opposed to J.C.'s plan. What's your plan? J.C. vice versa. And, and we have to understand me being against your plan that's not a plan. It's just be me being a loyal opposition. So um, I, I think um, the real challenge right now is, in many respects, I don't see anything different from us than I see in them. And I think that creates not only confusion, but if you can't tell any difference between you and me, then you're probably always going to get the vote. Hmm. Well, do you think we're going to have a contested convention? I, I do. I mm -hmm. think it will be a contested convention. We have good, bad, or indifferent. I think we have rules in place governing those things, and we can't say, I, I might not like them, but you don't say in about the middle of the fourth quarter, hey, t time out, I, I want to change the rules. What can the GOP do to improve minority outreach? Oh boy, how much time do we have? <laughs> I, I've, you know, I've, Jack Kemp and I, we were, you know, soldiers in arms and trying to get um, the Republican Party to do more and trying to attract non traditional voters, Hispanic, um, uh, black voters, um, non traditional voters. And, and Mark, I think we've gotten worse. I don't think we've gotten better. And I think one of the things, you know, the Republican Party's pretty good, and, and, and I think conservatives, we're pretty good in talking about righteousness, but we don't like talking about justice. And, and God said, you shall build your throne upon justice and righteousness. One without the other is, is incomplete. And, and I think there's some things that the party's not been willing to own up to and admit but uh, nevertheless, um, you know, relationships cover a multitude of sin. And the Republican Party's never had a deep relationship with the African American community. And I didn't learn relationships through politics. I learned them through by being a youth pastor and by being a quarterback. And, mm -hmm. you know, Mark, you and I, if we've got a relationship, you could say things to me that or that, that may seem racist or insensitive. And, and, and I'd say, I, that's Mark. He didn't mean mm -hmm. anything by that, vice versa. I could do the same thing. And mm -hmm. you defend me and say, ah, it's JC. That was not insensitive. He didn't mean that to be insensitive. I, I, I know him. That's what relationships can do. And, and the parties never had, uh, in the time that I've been a Republican, they've never had a, a deep relationship with non-traditional voters, including the black community. 
A CBN International humanitarian team has helped people in a poor region in Cambodia in desperate need of better health care. CBN provided the remote province with a four-day medical and dental mission. They gave out free health care and medication. This medical outreach helped more than 1,000 patients, including families, monks, and government officials. Well, it is time now for your Wednesday Word, and I've actually got three for you today. Just stay high. So what do I mean by that? Place yourself in God's presence and refuse to come down. Refuse to allow today's cares to pull you from it. Stuck in traffic? Just stay high. Bothered by a work issue? Just stay high. Bank account and bills aren't balancing? Just stay high. And if you're wondering how to get there, get in the Word and lift your hands in worship. So on this Wednesday, just stay high. That's going to do it now for this edition of CBN News Watch. You can find more of our exclusive coverage of the issues you care most about at CBNNews.com. We'd love to hear what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can do it on Facebook or at CBN News on Twitter. Hope you join us again right here next time. Make this a wonderful Wednesday. We'll see you tomorrow.